Part two. Jacob, are you ready? Yeah. Part two. First off, shout out to Jacob Hammock for all of the hard work that he does behind the scenes. Um, he is still single. Uh, he is ready to mingle at ccbcwv149 at gmail.com. Um, he is very open to uh, very liberal girls. He wants he, he does not like conservative girls at all. He wants somebody that will go against everything that he says. And we love and yeah, we love Jacob. So shout out to Jacob. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for all the hard work. He has the ability to cut all of that out, but, <laughs> but I have. He'll censor it. I'm at peace, and that the Lord told me to say that that his future wife is watching right now. No, he can't take that. Um, no, he can't. You, you have to leave it. Out, <laughs> Peeling hot, hot, hot. Peeling hot, hot, hot. Feeling hot, hot, hot. Delete it. <laughs> so, all right, welcome back to the. I, this may be the second part. We may we may lump this into the first. I don't know. The, the first half hour, things were just crazy. We were all over the place, but asparagus. that's good. We talked about uh, agape asparagus or whatever you said with the olive oil. I pulled I that one out of my butt. I don't, butt. I don't yeah. know what I said. I don't know what you said either. Um, I didn't mean to, I didn't say anyway, that. so the second thing, so the second part here, um, <laughs> I'm very excited to get Reed's opinion. I, I worked with him during the break. He was very nervous about this, but I'll say no. The <laughs> some things on a serious on a serious matter. Um, something that's really been on my mind lately is a couple of weeks ago in Utah, there was a twelve year old boy who committed suicide. He was looked from the outside looking in. He um, seemed like there was there was no red flags or concerns. Uh, he played football. He looked like he had a really good family, um, but he had some issues where he was being bullied at school. And that turned around and, and he decided to take his life at 12 years old. So that spawned a Twitter, uh, what's it called when there was a hashtag, a hashtag campaign, a Twitter campaign, right? Hashtag stop thread. bullying, right? Or something like that. Threat? No. A th thread. No, a thread, thread. not oh, thread. thread. Sorry. Um, and, you know, hashtag stop bullying. And this will, so we're going to use this for another topic that I have after this. Um, but I was sitting there thinking, you know, and maybe it's because my kids are, are getting to that point and I don't realize that there's so much stress and anxiety that you guys can face or even 12, 13, 14 year old that it could, it could lead to that. So how do we, like, what if this young boy was sitting at home and he watched you guys, uh, on this show say, hey, man, I faced some hard times, but the Lord got me through it. Or, hey, uh, you know, I have an awesome, amazing friend group that I've had put together for the last four years. And even though we're not perfect, you know, we um, they got me through some of the darkest times of my life. Like, what if that kid could see something like that? And what if there is somebody else out there that, you know, is leaning on what you guys have to say. So that's the point of this, uh, the point of this show, the point of how we're, we're trying to accomplish, what we're trying to accomplish. So Reed, um, wonderful young man. You put a lot of time. He sent me a message this week and said, hey, I saw your son uh, in school. He was looking very nice. A little, I believe dapper, dapper. was very the word. Dapper. Um, so I feel like you like to give a lot back. You know, you're very helpful. You're very... Um, charming, you know. I feel like you help out a lot, you know, especially with the younger generation. You had a uh, last two weeks. You've been seeing my son at school. You say he looks very dapper. He, uh, he had his little shirt and tie and his hair all gelled. He, uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning, like he adores you guys. So, what do you think? I mean, let's. What's your thoughts on bullying? What's your thoughts on? Have you ever been bullied? Like, how do you deal with it? What can you say to someone out there that may be struggling with it? What do you think? Um, I've never been bullied, but uh, I have been with people that have been bullied. And the best way for them to overcome it is to just talk to your friends or talk to someone. Or, um, I don't know, uh, go to church, uh, talk to your counselor. Always be open. Never be um, afraid to... Express yourself or keep it in. reach reach out. Yeah, I, a lot of I do that a lot. I, I keep a lot of my emotions in, and uh, because growing up, you know, and it, it, this wasn't this way for me, but um, my generation and even generations that were before me is like you know, suck it up, Buttercup. You know, like rub some dirt on it. You know, it, it'll all work out in the end. And now this 
this generation, especially now with COVID, it kind of helps um, open people's eyes more to like there actually is a struggle. You know, I mean, there people are uh, more open. You know, people are more honest with each other. It's helped spawn uh, a lot of conversation. So, uh, anybody else got anything on that? Zach, do you ever get bullied? Uh, back in my middle school years, I got I got bullied a few times. Uh, when I was 12 years old, I really went through a lot of personal stuff. It was really a rough patch in my life. And ironically, about that same age when I was 12 years old, it was the same time frame in my life when I was like doubting my salvation. Okay. So it was like a parallel of me being like, man, life's really not looking too good right now. I was getting very emotional, very um, personal. It was just like I was in a very dark place in my life. And now that I look back on it, it was the same time I was like, did I get saved right? Am I actually saved? Did I do it wrong? Just questioning salvation as a whole and be like, is this actually how it works? And is it really God that cares about me? Especially because I was like, no person cares about me, so why would a God care about me? It seems like that's the biggest thing is that anyone that faces any type of anxiety or stress or depression, like it's just the, the um, you feel like nobody loves you. Yeah. You feel like, Buck, you feel like anybody, you ever feel like nobody loves you? Uh, I, I love you, buddy. Thank you. I okay. appreciate that. All right. You ever feel that way? Uh, sometimes I do. Okay. So you guys told me you two uh, were the bullies or did get bullied? <laughs> did. Like what? Did what get oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, I figured you two were the not, bullies. Well, uh, Grace, no, Grace, I wouldn't Grace, say Grace. I'm the bully, but I'm not going to let people talk down on me. That's right. Good for you. Yeah. So you say something to me, I'm probably going to say something back to you. You'll bust them right Is in the Is it the right thing to do? No. Should I keep my mouth shut? Yes. Do you ever pray for your enemies? Yeah, when it gets bad. When, when what been, gets bad? Yeah. Like when it gets overly bad. Be like, okay. be like, God, I really wish we wouldn't do this right now. <laughs> it's not It's not a good character trait for me. I'm just asked to help both of us okay. overcome it. I understand. All right, what about you, Kendall? Um, yeah, I'd say I struggle with the same thing, like, I want to, like, stand up for myself and, like, say something. And I do sometimes. And then I look back and I'm like, that's not, like, something Jesus would do. Yeah. And I'm actually, like, struggling with that really bad right now. Because, I, I mean, people are not nice. And it's hard to, like, keep being nice. Do you Did you mention social media earlier, like, how yeah. hard it is? I mean, talk, like, how hard is it? I'm not into everything, right? Snapchat. Twitch, like everything. There's so many platforms, and there's going to be so many more. And I know you guys are all up to date on that. Like, how hard is it to have a good character and be on, be subject to being cyberbullied? I guess it's like, like it can happen to anybody. Like, sorry, I had to fix that. I love it. That's um, your job is to make sure my computer don't go to sleep. Like, it's not like the days of like. Like you say, like the old movies, like the early two thousands. It's like the old me, movies is early. No, 2000s. no, no. Okay, in the early 2000s. I know, but I mean, like, relative right now. Don't let her. Don't let her bully you. Go. You're good. See, I wouldn't consider this bullying. This. But I mean, like, like the this give me your lunch money. Bickering. I mean, like, like, like the give me your lunch money type bullying. Yeah. Like the put them in it. Like I'm gonna put you in a locker. wedgie yeah. or something. Like I'm gonna flush it. Yeah. yeah. Now people just hide behind their computer screen and their phone, and then they keyboard warriors. Keyboard warriors. Mm -hmm. They're more so, brave. so that's that's kind of uh, um, the one thing I wanted to spawn off this. I'm glad you said that, Brock, because I wanted to talk a little bit about double standards because I feel that there's a huge double standard when it comes to bullying. So we watched the Super Bowl together. We did, and um, our buddy Fifty Cent. Let's go. Turn it to a dollar. So okay, that's exactly right. That's what she just yeah. said. I don't think All he right. was that big. Okay, no, so I didn't think he was that big either. So Fifty Cent growing up was always known as a uh, uh, kind of a jack dude. He always wore the tank tops. He's right, ripped. He was ripped. Thank yeah. you. Something I'll never be or never have been. Um, look, look at that muscle. I, it did kind of perk up a little bit. Didn't it? Um, <laughs> So 50 Cent, the next day on online everywhere, the joke was 50 Cent turned into a dollar. He's almost actually a dollar, like for real, like age-wise. Okay. So all these uh, prayer warriors out there that were saying like hashtag stop bullying because this kid <laughs> took his life two weeks ago online are now posting memes about how big 50 Cent is. And just because he's a celebrity and it's weight... We think like, 
All right, and I did it too, okay? I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I was laughing at all the memes, you know, sending them to my buddies. Like, oh, man, look at this one, you know, when he was hanging upside down as a bat and stuff like that. And then I feel, then I started to read more about, you know, the unfortunate accident or the unfortunate um, thing that happened there to the 12-year-old. And the Lord kind of was like, hey, dude, you're living like this double standard life. Like, what if 50 Cent, what if our buddy 50 Cent, mine, I say it's our buddy, um, never met him. But uh, what if he took his life the very next day because he felt cyberbullied? I don't think that would be, like, too far stretched. But that's happened where, like, celebrities are just like, sure, I can't handle it. Like, they get, like, celebrities get bullied more than anybody because yeah. they're in the spotlight. But we think as a society, like, and as somebody that's trying to live a good, clean Christian life, you know, like, hey, it's okay for me to post a meme or make fun because it's celebrity like it's really I'm just joking yeah you know where is the point of joking or friendly bickering and I'm just like you know I'm just bringing it up because you did um, where does that stop and where should we then be the love of Christ of saying okay hey I know it's funny to make fun of the man but you know this isn't what we're supposed to do so where does that stop and where does that begin Zach does that make sense Can you restate the question well so <laughs> <laughs> can use it in a sentence like bullying like where does it stop of you know how you can carry on with your friends and then it goes to okay we should we we are now living you know this life of just saying well hey i'm i'm okay with this but i'm not okay with that but in all essence it needs to be the love of christ throughout everything i think it stops when you get a sense of that person like actually existing because the main thing behind like cyberbullying i feel like is that sometimes we forget that the person on the other side of that screen actually exists and has feelings and has a life, and we just forget about that and throw it away. And we're like, this person, that you don't even see him as a person. You just say whatever you want. And in reality, there's another person on that screen with feelings and a life reading that, and it can really mess them up because it would mess some, them up too. So that goes back to the competition that we talked about, you know, how easy it is to be the keyboard warrior and post things about your opponent online. Mm -hmm. But in essence... You know, that is something that is, even if you're in a competition with somebody, we need to be cognizant of how we are acting and how easy is it for me to post this um, bad thing about my competition and then Sunday morning get up here and lead the congregation. I mean, that just doesn't really make sense in my eyes. And I feel like a lot of that's happening out there, you know, um, and it's sometimes it's by, I do it a lot and I'm like, oh man, I didn't even realize it. But as you know, I'm trying to be, more conscious uh or conscious of that so um what do you think green we started with you let's end with you on that bullying is that a good point you're just gonna say yeah yeah <laughs> I don't know. that's what i figured all right so that i wanted to go a little bit with that so here's the other thing we're talking about hot topics okay right now ukraine russia very hot topic anybody up to date on that anybody watching that yeah I'll civics that class keeps okay. me up to date so all right. I have to tell Kaz about a lot of stuff because he does, like, I, I keep refreshing, like, Russia. I hope Adrian Ukraine. doesn't watch this. Yeah, She'll cry. To... Yeah, we have, like, classmates that are, like, really scared. And, like, when we talk about it in class, there's a couple that just, like, can't handle, like, hearing about it. What's, what is, because they have ties to Ukraine or family um, or they feel like it's the end of the world? Anxiety and stress yeah. and everything about Okay. It, like, that was the question. Nuclear. So I wanted to say, like, in this, in this, what, where we're at right now, with, you know, the world obviously having issues and, you know, there's political things that are being involved. Like, how does that relate to you guys? Do you guys get involved in that? You're like, I ain't worried about it. You know, like it is what it is, you know. So that was my question. And you guys go ahead and start talking about that. So you keep up with a lot in school. Mm -hmm. And there's people that are genuinely saying like, oh, my gosh, we're at the end of times. Um, there's a lot of people that think that. But there's like some people that blow it out of proportion and like news Sites the blood out of proportion, and so it, it like it freaks the people out, it makes them panic, and so then they're like, "Oh, everybody's gonna die," because like just because Russia has the nukes doesn't mean they're gonna use them, and so like, "Oh, they're gonna blow us up and we're all gonna die," and like the next month. So you genuinely have people yeah, in your sense. school that are yeah. so upset yeah. they can't talk about it. like they're crying, like oh, yeah. they they have become anxious and stuff. All right, do you use this as an opportunity or like how do you handle? I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to the ladies. How do you guys handle people like that? I mean, what do you? Um, well, the people that are them? like really really panicked um, usually aren't like completely informed. So like I kind of just explain that like we have 
ways to like protect ourselves because they just kind of like jump to the conclusion that they're like headed here right now so i kind of like just explain like how we have an alliance to like kind of protect us okay but yeah you guys are a lot smarter with uh current government affairs you know being (laughs) being your involvement and stuff than what i am i use so i've had this happen to me here recently and it happened friday is um People started talking about it being the end of times, you know, and you see that all the time. Like, Lord's coming back. You better get prepared. Like, that's awesome that people are saying that. I have absolutely no idea when the Lord is coming back. Um, But I had this happen to me in the class that I was going to on Friday is, you know, these people that I was with was talking about, hey, this is the Lord's coming back. Like, it's the end of times. And I was able to use this as a starting uh, topic to help plant the seed of salvation you know like so after everybody gives me their wild ideas about how the world's ending with zombies and you know there's going to be uh there's just going to be meteors that fall out of the sky and you know star wars is going to happen and all that stuff and so at the end when we're just sitting around here talking i'm like you know there's only one thing that's going to happen like you're either going to die you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell and i left it at that right you know just to kind of throw the seed out there a little bit so i can water it so this for me has been an opportunity to help, like, share the gospel. I mean, you know, people were worried about the end of times. Like, well, hey, do you know what's going to happen? Like, are you yourself comfortable with what's going to happen at the end of the world? Um, so I've had that happen to me. Anybody else other than? That actually happened to Reed and I this past Friday. We were in the office talking to a classmate who was really panicked about what was happening. Mm-hmm. And Etta, the secretary, as we were leaving, she just turned to us and said, it doesn't matter because God's got this. Yeah. So there's no need to like, you can stay informed, but you don't have to worry yourself to death sure. because God's got it. That's great. It's a good opportunity. That's what I said to the same classmate too, because it's a mutual friend of everybody. And we were like, we talk about it in civics every other day that we have civics and that's where we learn everything. And I feel like kids that are younger than us should have a form of a class like that so that they can have the same information that we get, get and they shouldn't have to wait till our senior year to get this information because most of them like I love history that's one of my favorite classes like I love learning about it but I think that they should also take time to learn current things going on because if I didn't have this class I would have no idea what was going on in the world and that's what I explained to my friend is I'm because she's genuinely worried about it like we joke about like a draft or whatever. None of us think there's af- like actually going to be a draft, but we all say it. And she's like, what if my boyfriend gets drafted? I'm like, that's not going to happen. Like, I highly doubt that's going to happen. And she's like, why aren't you worried about it the way I'm worried about it? And I'm like, because there's nothing I can do. If there was something that I could do, then I would be worried about it. But it's not in my hands. It's in God's hands and what he wants to do with it. So that's why I'm not like crying over it every time I think about it. So I yeah. just think that more people should be informed about like the logistics of all of it. No, that's good, and I think, and, and as you're saying too, I mean, more need more people need to be informed, and it's it's our obligation and duty to let people know that hey, God does got this, you know. I mean, here's and here's four or five things um, that I have in the Bible that help me believe that. So, Zach, you got anything? You're a very smart, intelligent person. So, are we <clears throat> talking about like the end of times kind of thing? Right? We're now? just talking about like God having the handle on everything. Yeah. Um, I mean, I believe God controls no every aspect of everybody's life. I so, to put him on the spot. <laughs> at a certain point in time, you just got to let everything go and understand that God takes control of everything. All right, next thing. I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Um, I'm not too up to date on what happened. Maybe you guys are because you're in high school. So a few weeks ago, there was this big thing in Cabell County schools about um, was the FCA or there was yeah. a fellowship of Christian athletes. And it was voluntary, but two of the teachers – ended up bringing their classmates into this and they apparently had the gospel shared to them in some fashion. Do you guys, any of that? I saw like several like things online from like students that went there that they were protesting what happened. They were protesting that they shouldn't be subject to having, they're forced to go listen to a Christian based assembly. Yeah. Okay. So from the way that I understand it, and if I'm wrong, I mean, please somebody tell me, but the way that I understand it, that there was a, a Christian um, assembly in some fashion, and it's voluntary to go, but two of the teachers wanted to attend, and they couldn't get anybody to watch their class, 
So they brought the classes in there. I don't think that they were forced to go, but it caused a big uproar because people were saying, you can't force my kids to attend a Christian association assembly. And I don't know. I can see both sides of that. Like I wouldn't want my kids to be forced to go to something that, you know, maybe like an LGBTQ type of assembly or something because they are, you know, I just, I just don't want them subject to that from as a parent. Um, so, I mean, I don't know as from, from your standpoint, how easy or hard or what can and can't you do to help spread the gospel in, um, school. I mean, I know for instance, like, cause we're all connected to, you know, Monday night young life and, but that's an outside, um, outside of the school property. So like from you guys, like what can you do? What can't you do? Uh, to help, you know, your um, spreading of the gospel in some fashion? Um, I think it's just using those outside sources and bringing them into the school. Like, talking about Young Life and Wednesday Night Church at school. Like, hey, are you coming? You should really come. Like, it's a good time. So you have to do it, like, word of mouth. Like, you're not, yeah. you're not technically able to go and sit down and... Like, what would happen if you had... Um, like, what would happen if you had your Bible out? during school is that allowed i don't even know what's allowed and what's not allowed like are you allowed to no idea. sit down yeah. during lunch like can you can you students can do pretty much anything they want it's when the teachers and staff get involved so you can games. you can do your own like bible study group or something like hey guys every monday at twelve thirty, we're going yeah. to do this mm-hmm. if we want but if a, but if yeah. a teacher is as long as it doesn't interfere with the class lesson plan we can do whatever we want now if we stand up in the middle of class and start preaching then the teacher can get mad at us for disrupting class. Uh-huh. But if we finish our classwork and want to read our Bible with our past time, they can't say anything. Okay. But we yeah. have had teachers that won't let us speak about our beliefs or anything because then they'll shut us down. Yeah. So we've had certain teachers that we can't speak. We can't wear certain things into their room because they'll get mad at us, say something at us, but they can have their opinion and speak it to us and teach it to us, but we can't say anything back. Wow. We have had that. So what do you mean we should, they shut us down? Like, what does that mean? They, they fail you? Like or they'll, they'll try to like they'll contradict just, your statements. Yeah, okay. like you'll they'll say like, something. They'll be like, well, how does that work? How does that go on? Yeah. Why do you believe that? And then you have to, it feels embarrassing that you're like, like you have to explain yourself in front of, your classmates of sure. why, and, and then your teacher is like your... degrading you, yeah. Because like you, we don't know everything. Like Zach doesn't even know everything, and he's like one of the people that I think knows the most about the Bible that yeah. I know. Yeah. And like they like try to pressure like a lot of the stuff we're not supposed to know. And but like, you feel like they're kind of like baiting you in a little bit. Yeah, like they, they try, they're trying to, to make they want to make you look dumb. They're trying to make you look like in front yeah. of your peers, in front of everybody, yeah. and so everybody. Yeah. That's, so how do you do that? In that point, do you say, okay, I'm going to buckle down and I'm going to go at them harder or just like it's not worth a fight? I feel like we should look at it as God wouldn't argue, like Jesus wouldn't argue with them. Sure. But we're just like, this is what I believe and this is. Right. Yeah, I just explain myself to a certain point where I feel like it gets the point across and then if they don't get it, they'll never get it. Sure. And you can kind of like plant the seed with that as well. To your classmates, like everybody if, if knows the, you. If the teacher's just there pushing it and then you're just like, well... I know my God, and this is what he says, and this is what the Bible says. And then the teacher is just, she's looking like a jerk, and you're here, like, calm and collected. Yeah. And so the kids are like, well, she looks like a fool right now. Yeah. And this kid, who's supposed to be not as mature as the teacher, right. is, is acting not in their business. Doing okay. God's work. Well, that's awesome. Doing God's work. <laughs> I'm glad you do that. I told you I'd get it somewhere. You did. I told you, you I'd get somewhere. Then. Well, that's great. I mean, I appreciate that you guys have that, you know, a, um, I guess, courage enough to do that. And there is a point, you know, I mean, there's a point where you can just become overly passionate about it, you know, to where you, you have to juggle the line of saying, okay, I want to plant the seed. Um, I can make this teacher probably look like a fool, you know, Mm -hmm. but if I'm kind of bashing my character (coughs) and how people like my peers are seeing me, like it's not Christ like, you know, the way that I handle things. But if I'm using this as an opportunity to, you know, kind of quietly sprinkle, uh, some of the things that God wants me to put, you know, they they may look at it that way. So I didn't know. I mean, that's pretty good. It's not just teachers. It's like fellow peers that you we probably have. probably have that a lot. Yeah. Because yeah, we did debates in civics class, mm-hmm. and Zach was very passionate about a certain one, and everybody knew that he was going to be very passionate about it, and we had classmates that shut it down immediately. What was you passionate about? Abortion. 
Okay. But the, the whole point of hey, this is. Hey, that's what we're here to. We're here yeah. about talking about it. It's, it's an opinion. It's not a point. debate. No, it's so, an opinion. Right. But everybody so, started debating about it. They're like, well, and then Zach's like, listen here, buddy. Yeah. Zach gave it to him straight. So and Zach I. Goes at him. Yeah, that's probably one of the times I've respected Zach the most is when he spoke that way to people putting him down. That's good for Thanks, you, man. Zach. Hey, you know, that's his legacy that we wanted to leave behind. You got that right there from. He'll never be forgotten, whether it's a good or bad thing. He'll never be forgotten. Especially not in Grayson's Even if he wants to, even if he wants to, to leave. Huh? You need a tissue over there, shot. buddy? Shot yeah, he'll be in Florida and people will still remember that debate. Yeah. Well, good for you. Well, that's awesome. And, like, one of the things you hear about, like, like speaking about, like, religion in school, mm -hmm. is the kids complain about, like, don't show it down our throats. Like, you, you, know, you can talk about it, but then, like, there's kids like, oh, don't talk about it in front of me. Like, don't show it down our throats. Yeah. But I know Zach's gotten that because he's told me that he's gotten that comment before where he's like, try to talk to kids about it. But, like, what they don't realize is what we know that if they don't get saved, then, like, they're eternally going to go to hell. Yeah. And, like, we don't want that. Yeah. And so we try to tell, like, we try to teach them about God and hell is bad. Yeah, because if, if what I believe is wrong and what you believe is right, the way you believe is we're not going to go anywhere. Sure. So I won't go anywhere. But if I'm right and you're wrong, I'm going to heaven and you're going to hell. Right. There's a difference between it, and I'd rather be in heaven. And I've, I've found that there is, you can have friends with different points of views, you know, um, and that's that's fine. That's healthy. I mean, you respect their opinions and I respect, uh, they respect mine, you know, but when it boils down to there is one major decision that we have, and that is where are you going to go at the end of the day? Um, heaven or hell we talked about this one time and and actually um, Gracie Wilson brought it up to me the other day is one thing she remembered is how can I hate somebody enough not to tell them how to get to heaven like you would have to hate somebody a lot to willingly let them die and go to hell and I sit there and I think about that like I don't have an enemy enough that I would love for them to die and and go to hell like I could, you would have to hate somebody an awful lot to know the answer on going to heaven, and you just refuse to let them know. Um, so that that stuff. Well, I, I appreciate you guys letting me know that stuff. Like what goes on uh, in in a school. So I think that about does it. I think that about wraps it up. You know, at least for here. I appreciate all you guys coming on. Is there anything you have to say? Anything you want to leave with? Anything? Other, you know, what what can you say to the next generation that's coming up? Like, uh, what was it? It's all God's plan. God's work. God's work. God's, God's plan. <laughs> Grace you. All right. Thank you, guys. I uh, appreciate all you guys, especially you, Reed, um, for being here. Um, share this video. Hopefully, it helps somebody. Uh, and if you're ever interested in learning more, you come to our church, 149 7th Avenue in South Charleston. Uh, you may see these guys throughout uh, the time that we're here. And uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.